morning everyone. This is Diane Murray at Southern Art Gallery and today is part of our um, Watercolor 101 beginning watercolor class here on YouTube. I thought we would discuss the different brands of paint and pros and cons and my preferences of the, my favorite paints. So I guess we will start with Daniel Smith. They have beautiful uh, granulating pigments. That's really what they're known for is their incredible um, granulation. I don't um, just use one brand of paint. I choose the my paints by the actual color and pigment rather than by the company. And I find that by doing that, I'm able to get the most uh, transparent clear, vivid colors, and I get to choose what I like rather than, you know, whatever they they happen to have in their sets. So I don't tend to buy a lot of sets of uh, watercolors. I tend to buy the individual tubes. I don't uh, particularly care for pans, although I'll use them in my travel um, palette, but I prefer tubes. So that being said, this is a, uh, just a sample sheet from Daniel Smith. I'm sure you've seen this online and I'm sure you've seen people swatch it out. And you know, Daniel Smith has some beautiful pigments. The green Appetite Genuine, let me just get something to point to. The green, this is a gorgeous color. The, um, their Quinacridone Gold is just incredibly popular. Their Quinacridone Burnt Orange is incredibly popular. They have really nice <clears throat> quinacridone colors. The one negative, well, there's several negatives that I've found personally with the Daniel Smith. And one of those things is because I keep my tube paints for a very long time, they tend to dry out in the tubes. That's been my experience. And it's uh, very, very difficult to re-wet them and get them out of the tubes. The other uh, difficulty with Daniel Smith, and these are, just while I'm talking, these are the Daniel Smith colors that I do have on my palette. And um, the other thing is some of their pigments are weak. They have weak tinting strength, like um, some of the, particularly their earth colors, like this Italian burnt sienna or the, the, the deep ochre. They're very hard to, you can't really get a vivid color with those. Uh, it takes a lot of work. But overall, I really like uh, Daniel Smith paints. And I, li I like their uh, cobalt teal a lot. They have a beautiful endantherine. They have a wonderful nickel azo. And this is that iridescent gold and bronze and interference that I was talking about. They have a nice uh, quinacridone violet. This is the Quinacridone Burnt Scarlet, which is a real, really nice color. Moon Glow is a really nice color by them. So that's my opinion on Daniel Smith. I have recently um, been purchasing M. Graham. And as you can see, I've started uh, swatching out the M. Graham and I am totally blown away by these paints. I really like M. Graham paints. I love their, their, the, how vivid their pigments are, and their single pigments, most of them, the ones I have so far. I love the fact that um, they have the honey, which is just awesome for me because I don't like crusty, dry paint in my palette. And um, sometimes if you leave paint in a palette for a long time, it breaks into these little bits and it's almost impossible to get a fluid um, wash out of that. So I love the way that the M. Graham um, reconstitutes when you add water to it. This is uh, just some of the swatches of the colors that, that I have. And I, I, I would suggest you check out M. Graham. The only downside that I'm aware of with M. Graham is that they may not travel well because of the honey. They may um, leak. I don't know if that happens, but it's a possibility because of the honey. 
So that's the only thing I'm, I'm uh, concerned with when it comes to M. Graham. They're also very reasonably priced. So good price point on that. The other um, honey-based paint that I'm really fond of is Sennelier. I really like Sennelier's paints. They're just, they're, their pigments are beautiful and I love the honey and I love the way they re-wet. They're just beautiful paints. And I absolutely love their grays. They have the most beautiful grays that, that I've ever seen. Um, some of their pigments are kind of strange. The alizarin crimson is deep, permanent alizarin crimson deep, has, is very brown, but I still use it and I like it, but it is very brown. Um, this Cineris blue is a gorgeous color. It has white in it. They do put white in some of their pigments, as they all do, but um, I really like Sennelier a lot. And then probably the, the one I have the most of is Da Vinci. And the reason for that is Da Vinci comes in very large 37 milliliter tubes, and it's quite a value when you buy it that way. And when you paint a lot, you know, you really save a, a lot of money by buying the larger tubes of the colors that you use a lot. Now these are the, the Da Vinci's that I have on my palette. And they have beautiful, like their quinacridone red is gorgeous. They have a color called alizarin gold, which I use all the time. Now it's a brownie red, but it is just beautiful. They have a good burnt sienna, which is burnt sienna deep. They have a quinacridone orange. They have beautiful cobalts and phthalo blues. And they just have, the overall, their pigments are probably the most consistent and stable of all the companies I use. And I don't think there's anything I'm really disappointed with when it comes to Da Vinci. This is Da Vinci. This is this little sample kit that I ordered just to see the, some different colors that I didn't have on my palette. Um, I got this... Um, because I ordered, uh, you had to order a certain amount of um, Da Vinci paints and you got you got to purchase this little travel palette, which is just really cute. But these are some of the colors on that palette. And as you can see, here's Da Vinci Red, which is a gorgeous pyro red. They're just, they just have beautiful pigments. And I just, I love Da Vinci paints. I, I can travel with Da Vinci paints without a problem. They are what it, what they are the paint that I use in my travel palettes because they do um, dry out, but they don't dry crusty and hard. I never have a problem opening Da Vinci's tubes. It doesn't matter how long I've had them. And they're a really good price point, so I, I strongly recommend Da Vinci. Another uh, company that I really like, another brand, is May Marie Blue. I started out using these uh, quite a few years ago, and I don't use them as much as I used to, but I do love their pigments, and I do, they have like a Garnet Lake, which is just absolutely beautiful violet. They have a Verzino violet, which is just beautiful. It's um, kind of a magenta. Here's that deep red that, that's their version. They have a beautiful, they just, they, you can see how rich their pigments are. Their blues are particularly beautiful. They really have some beautiful blues. Their earth tones, not so much. I'm not so crazy about them, but I, I love their blues and their reds. So May Marie Blue is an Italian company. You might want to check them out. They're really very reliable, and I've, I've, I have only good things to say about them. These are just some odd things on my palette. These are some Winsor Newton colors. Um, I'm not a big fan of Winsor Newton. Um, their pigments just seem weak to me. I have a travel kit that has a Winsor Newton in it that I rarely use, and I'm actually um, transferring some of the colors from some of my other colors into that little palette. <clears throat> so I'm not uh, I'm not a big fan of Winsor Newton. Let's see. Okay, this is Holbein. I do like Holbein paints. I have these in my palette. The only problem with Holbein is that they tend to be somewhat on the opaque side 
a little less transparent, but they have some incredibly beautiful colors. Uh, Vertiter Blue is one of my favorite colors. <clears throat> Their turquoise is beautiful. They have a very nice cerulean blue. They have, they have some very nice colors. And, and I really like Holbein. They're also um, more on the affordable side. And these are the Turner paints that I have. Um, the, the main thing I can say about Turner is they are very inexpensive. And they're good, you know, they have good light fastness. All these companies have good light fastness. Turner has some nice colors like this moss and this sprout, which are very unusual colors. Um, they do tend to have a lot of pigments in their paint though, which um, is a bit bothersome. But you know, they're, they're a, if you're looking for inexpensive paints to get started with, Turner would be a great choice. And then recently I've added Core to my palette. And these are the core colors that I have so far because I really wanted to see um, what core was all about and how comparable they were to other paints that I use and I found that they're uh, extremely transparent they're beautiful pigments um, this is their color chart they have some interesting uh, reds and interesting golds they have a nice, a nice palette. The only thing I didn't care for was their quinacridone gold, which to me was just too orange when I compared it to my other paints that I have down here. But the thing I like best about Core is how they spread in water. They just burst in the water. It's just beautiful. So I think that's their greatest strength. And they have a different binder that's not gum Arabic and we'll have to wait and see how that um, plays out and how popular that ends up being. But um, so far I'm very impressed with Core as well. I do not have uh, Sminky on my palette, but I, they did send me this chart, this little um, sample chart. And they do have some very nice colors from what I can see. I can't really... Um, say much about them because I don't actually have the paints. I do particularly love this color though. It's called Ruby Red Deep, which I think is just an awesome color. So that, that Smicky's interesting to me. I just don't know very much about them. And I think that is all the paints that I use. I think I covered everybody. Let's make sure. I sample everything. I keep a record of all my paints. And I just started doing this about a year ago and it has helped tremendously because I used to never know what was on my palette or you know what it looked like when you actually swatched it out. So this has been a, a great help for me. So, and these are, these are the uh, M. Graham colors and how beautiful they um, actually mix. They're beautiful mixing colors. So there you have it. Those are the paint brands that I particularly like and use, and I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please subscribe, and we will be making more videos on color theory and uh, tutorials on watercolor painting. Thanks for joining me.